okay welcome back to part 2 of this audio visual tutorial and this time we're going to have a look at animating particles manually and this is not same as manual keyframing now what's the reason for manual animation where we can do this automatically using on using an audio controller well let's talk about the aesthetics of an audio visual as of now the software can only interpret the change in volume level and create animation accordingly but think of the situation where you where you want to uh, make your particles react when there is a change in chords in the strings like violin or what if you want to change the particle colors according to the mood of the music or a song and there is no way a, a computer can uh, interpret that and make changes to the particles accordingly but if you have a separate instrument track uh, of the audio file then you might be able to make the particles react to a specific instrument to some extent but in most cases you will come across audio mixes where the volume have been uh, normalized so there is there would be not much difference in the audio level and the effect on particles of these kind of audio files will be very subtle and uh, that is far from what we call uh, call an awesome audio visual particle audio visual so let's see some easy ways to animate things uh, manually in 3ds max using motion capture and we'll use this technique uh, along with the automated technique that we saw before to make particle animations based on audio files so we create a spear here go to motion panel and select the position transform and we'll assign it a position motion capture controller so we'll double click on that and in this dialog you can select the uh, controller device that you are using I'm using a dual joystick uh, gamepad so I'll select that for all the three axes and remember to assign the position in any axis to its corresponding axis on the joystick so once it's done close this out and go to utility panel and click on motion capture so now you can select the object you're going to animate so click on it and it will turn red now hit the test button now if I uh, move my joystick you can see uh, the spear is responding to the movement of my joystick now hit escape to get out of test mode and double click here to open the motion capture window and we'll talk about two important parameters here when you let go your joystick it will snap back to its uh, neutral position and similarly the object by default will snap back to its initial position when you let go the joystick but if you turn on accumulate you can see the object will retain its position where it is when you let go the joystick now I'll turn off accumulate for every axis and let's talk about the scale the scale determines how far your object will move from its initial position when you move your joystick to its limits a higher value will move the object far and hence faster and a lower value move the object over smaller distance as you see a higher value moves it very fast and if you lower the scale here now you'll see the object will move over very small distances now when you are ready to record the animation click the start button here but before you do that make sure the record range is set properly now if I hit the start and move my joystick the movement of the spear will be recorded and when the recording stops you can see the keyframes are appearing here on the timeline now we have way too much data than we require for our animation here so we'll do some cleanup and we'll do that by going to the curve editor and graph editor and reduce the, the, uh, the keys that are really not necessary for our animation so we'll reduce the keys and this is just an optional step uh, if you like to have a cleaner file and it's a good habit to have a cleaner file and now you can uh, tweak each keyframe manually as per your taste 
or you can select all of them and scale them, move them and do what you like till you uh, get the animation you are looking now let's see how to set up a scene for making a particle animation as you saw in the preview of this tutorial so first we will select the audio file we are going to use as our reference so we will select the audio file here and I know this audio file is approximately 1550 frames so I'll set my timeline to 1550 frames as well now we'll create a spear here and we, we will apply a noise modifier to it so we'll go to the modifier panel and apply a noise modifier to it we'll change this to fractal and the strength along every axis will be controlled by an audio controller so we'll go to the graph editor and go to the strength track of the noise modifier select it and assign an audio controller modifier an audio controller to it now we'll select the audio file and set the strength to about uh, strength target to about 80 along every axis we'll give it some threshold and close this out now if I hit the start button you can see our object is distorted due to the noise modifier which is reacting to the sound file now if we turn on animate noise we will get an unique distortion at every instance now I'll be using the same particle setup we saw in the first part of this tutorial so I'll just open up the particle view and switch the emitter object and uh, remove that the plane that we had before and select the sphere here and if I unhide the particle and hit the play button you'll see our object is scattering particles according to the audio wave file now we have to do some adjustment to our previous particle setup that we had for the plane so we will change the end time to 1550 and also raise the number of our particles and we will make them about 10,000 So this is how our particle animation looks right now and as you can see the particles are being scattered too far from our object and this doesn't look really nice so what we'll do is we'll copy the uh, speed test operator and the delete operator we'll take the delete operator and make a new event and take this speed test operator to event 2 so the particles with higher uh, high speed or higher velocity in event 2 will go to event 3 and get deleted so if I set this to about 600 you can see see here the particles with velocity over speed over 600 are going to even 3 and are displayed as ticks so let's reduce it to about 400 and let's delete all the particles that go to event 3 so now we have a little less uh, particles that are scattered way too far still we need some minute adjustments so I will uh, take some parameters on this drag space wrap here and now if I hit the play you can see this is this is pretty good for right now of course this is not a high-end particle audio particle animation but for this tutorial this will do and the 
particles are not uh, being sca scattered all over the place and this will do for what we are looking after. Now that the secondary animation of our particles are done, I'll turn up the particle system here and exaggerate the motion of this object according to the wave file using manual animation technique that we talked before. So I'll just repeat the same thing I showed you earlier in this tutorial and use motion capture to animate the movement uh, of this object according to the wave file, the audio wave file. So if I hit test now, as you can see I have accidentally uh, used motion capture on this space wrap so I'll just pause the recording and set up the spear to animate using motion capture. So once you are done setting up motion capture it's all up to you how you want to animate your object according to the sound file. So just hit the start button here and start recording your animation. I have already done this and you can see the final output here. As you can see here I have used Krakatoa for this but it's totally up to you what you want to use. Fume effects, even afterburn for some cool effects. And this is not all, you can even animate texture parameters uh, and even parameters of any operator in any event in the particle view uh, using these techniques and get some cool effects. So go ahead and try animating textures using this technique and use that texture map to uh, emit particles and also try to uh, manipulate the parameters of operators in any event using this technique and let's see what you can come up with. I will be uh, looking forward to see some of the animations that you have created and if you have learned something from these tutorials please feel free to send a link of your work and I love to see that. So I will catch up with you guys in the next tutorial which will be about magma flow of course. So till then keep the music high and keep rocking. Take care.